Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu and I'm back with another Digimon video. So today I'm going to be talking about the color purple, and not necessarily the way you would think I would talk about the color purple. I think the color purple as a whole is a very strong color because it has high levels of synergy, allowing you to basically create lots of various different decks because everything just seems to mesh and meld with one another, and as long as you just fill up your trash, it kind of seems like you can make anything work, which is really cool and really uh, exciting from a deck builder's perspective because purple just has so much to explore, except it might only small tiny tiny problem with purple is its accessibility kind of is a little bit on the higher side. So even though there is just lots of possibilities that purple has, figuring out those possibilities could be a little bit hard for some players to put that together. And then on top of that, well, the price is also a little bit expensive on some of their cards. So I don't know if you bother to take a look at all of the sets, but we're currently about 10 sets in. If you're excluding the supplementary sets, then we're about 8 sets in as far as what Japan's concerned. And if we take a look at all of the secret rares, which is currently the highest level of rarity that we have outside of the Ghost Omni, which I'm not counting as its own rarity because that was just artificially put into the set, but I digress. And if we take a look at the highest base rarity that we have, it's going to be the secret rares. And if we take a look at all of the sets, we could see that purple has its hand in the pie of a lot of the secret rare slots. So as far as the history of purple secret rares, starting with BTO2, when purple was first introduced, we have Beelzemon. So Beelzemon was the first purple secret rare, then we got a little bit of a break from purple getting a secret rare in BTO4. Three, and in BTO4, we get Lusimon. So even though Lusimon isn't a purple card in of himself, purple still has synergy and can actually have access to use this card efficiently in various different ways. So it's still a really good card to play in complements with purple, making it another secret rare for purple to be using, even though he's not exactly a purple card. Then moving on to BT05, we get Omnimon's Work Defeat, which is a level 7 for purple to be using because he evos off of purple, making it so if you're playing a purple deck, there's a high chance you actually want to use this card because this card's really, really strong. And then uh, moving on to BT06, we get Bella Starmon, which is another purple secret rare who's really good and can be played in lots of different ways and in a couple of different decks. And then moving on to uh, BT07, we get Lusimon Chaos Mode, which is kind of where and why I included Lusimon, because they do have interaction with one another. So if you do want to use this Lusimon, you also might want to have the other Lusimon as well. But I digress, and again, this is just another secret rare for purple to be using coming from BT07, on top of the fact that you technically, from BT07, could use Susanomon because it's just a rainbow evolution. This card could be worked with all colors. So in BT07, you technically have two secret rares for purple to be using. Oh joy. And then moving on to BT08, we have Creepymon or Diamon. So uh, this is just another purple secret rare that's interacting with Demon Lords, which a lot of these secret rares are Demon Lords, but it's just another really good purple card that you want to be using, locked away at a high rarity slot. And then uh, moving on to uh, the uh, supplementary sets in uh, Digital Hazard, we get Beelzemon Blast Mode, which is another level 7 for purple to be interacting with, especially in a Beelzemon-based deck, which, if you bother to look at BTO2, one of the secret rares is a Beelzemon. So uh, purple is a color where it has a lot of secret rares out of the uh, 10 technical sets that we have currently available. We have what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have uh, like seven secret rares out of the 10 sets available, and one set even has two secret rares. So there's just a little bit of a pattern where they seem to lock behind uh, the secret rare slot a purple card more often than any other color. And at face value, that's not necessarily a problem in of itself, but when we get to the overall accessibility on uh, people actually wanting to play that color, well, the barrier of entry starts to become a little bit high, especially for utilizing any of those specific cards. So if you want to play a Beelzemon-based deck, then you're going to have to fork over a little bit of uh, higher money compared to some of the other colors in order to play your Beelzemon. And the same is said for basically all of the other secret rares. Some of them are a little bit higher priced than others, so it just creates this barrier to entry on not only having the card be hard to pull, but also hard to buy because it's hard to pull, which again, isn't necessarily a problem for any other color but purple. 
So even though not all of these cards are going to be four ofs in every single deck ever, that's just not necessarily super realistic depending on the build and the types of synergies and combo plays you're trying to play around with, we could still see that uh, a lot of the cards are still in very high demand, and anytime they announce any new support for something, the price immediately jumps back up. So Usaman, as an example, for the most part started off pretty high, and then he dipped really, really low just because he didn't see as much usability, but was still relatively high price. And then the second he got some support announced, the price started climbing a little back up and then stabilized back down. So that's the general trend that Purple's uh, Secret Rares tend to take, where they'll always start super high because they're a Secret Rare, and then they'll dip a little bit, and then if anything gets announced to help that card be more playable, it immediately jumps all the way back up. And then usually the way the market works is once a card jumps up in price, usually it doesn't reset back to where it once was, it usually stays at a relatively higher price, even though it does climb down a little bit. But as we can see, a lot of the secret rares are really highly priced just because, well, a lot of these cards are still good. And if you're playing some of these decks, depending on where the meta currently is, sometimes they're just uh, needed in order to play certain decks, even if it's not necessarily for a particular deck you think it's for. So Omnimon's Sword Defeat is another great example where this isn't necessarily played in a lot of purple decks. It's played more in security control based decks, but it's still the fact that it is a purple card and can be played with purple makes it a very good card for just a multitude of different decks. And usually the best rule of thumb when it comes to the secondary market is if a card has uh, the ability to be played in more decks than what it's initially designed for, then it's going to have a slightly higher price than what you might think just because the overall demand for that card is more. So while purple decks can still utilize Omnimon's Word Defeat and sometimes want to use Omnimon's Word Defeat, a lot of other decks also are trying to utilize this card too, making it even higher price than some of the other secret rares before it, just because it has a higher level of usability and it sees more overall play in the general meta. But even when you do need four of a particular card, sometimes the overall quantity and how many people are trying to get rid of or sell the card could help keep the price of a card down. But just because this is a secret rare, it's still going to have a really high price tag just because it is going to be relatively hard to pull the card still, even with lots of sellers trying to help keep the price down. So uh, there still is just uh, something to be said in the overall playability on some of these secret rares, and even though the stock and quantity could be plenty in supply, it's still just the fact that it's really hard to pull these cards that still make it a really sought after card, especially if you need four of it. So just as a point of reference in a case setting where if you buy a case which is going to be 12 boxes of Digimon, Usually in that case, you'll only open up four of any particular secret rare and one alt art of any particular secret rare. So in a case, you're only going to see five secret rares of the one that you're going to be wanting to get. So if you are trying to hunt down a particular secret rare, it is going to be a little bit hard unless you're just straight up buying a case or straight up buying the singles at a slightly higher price uh, than some of the other cards you would normally be buying. And then purple just has a lot of really playable cards and uh, some of these cards stand out a little bit more than others in terms of their overall usability in decks and particular roles that they're trying to fill. So uh, Lilithmon is one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive base SR in the game, just because in the set that she was from, she's a little bit harder to pull from and she has a very powerful deck and you do need like three to four copies of her in order to play said deck. And then on top of that, Omnimon Swart, even though he is another base SR, he still is one of the more expensive base SRs, even though there's a ton of him floating around. It just goes to show you that a card like that, just because he has lots of playability in lots of different decks, it does add to the overall demand, making him hold a slightly higher price tag. And then when it comes to some of the uh, tools that Purple had access to, the one thing that they didn't really have access to a secondary card of is going to be a memory fixing tamer. So it took all the way from the set's initial release all the way up until Digital Hazard or EX02 to get a second memory fixing tamer so that way we could actually utilize other tamers outside of just a mat if you're even using mat. Granted, there are some other really good purple tamers out there that people could have access to, but in terms of just a generic memory fixing tamer, we really didn't have anything other than Matt for a very long time. 
So between cards being hard to pull, the lack of uh, other tools to replace it, certain cards that we generally would want, and uh, a card's overall playability definitely creates a little bit of a barrier to entry for anyone who's playing purple. I do think purple is a very fun, powerful, and rewarding color when you actually get the handle of it and when you actually do have the cards to play certain decks that you want to try to play, but it is one of the harder colors to play, not only from a price point standpoint, but from a general strategy standpoint, just because there's so much the color can do that it could be a little bit hard to figure out what you want to gain out of said color and the types of cards in support that you want to use with said color. I don't necessarily think there's a problem with any of this. I'm just pointing out uh, that these are some factors that, that could result or have been resulting in people not really trying to play around with the color just because it is a little bit harder to play and a little bit harder to access and buy into than some of the other colors. But keep in mind, there's still a plenty that you could do with the color. It's just uh, these are just some of the factors that I think would limit a person from really enjoying the color and having full access to what the color can do. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below. And down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link. So when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook. So when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu. So giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there. And I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching. And uh, as always, uh, don't forget to, to like, uh, share, and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.